This is NVIDIA's H100 chip, used to power everything from artificial intelligence to virtual reality. And these are Lay's chips, which are delicious. But while I've got plenty of these, there aren't enough of NVIDIA's chips to go around, and it's becoming a crisis. Elon Musk says it's easier to score an 8-ball on Market Street than it is to find chips right now. The GPUs are, um, at this point, considerably harder to get than drugs. <laughs> Actually, it's, that's really not a high bar in San Francisco. In fact, chip maker NVIDIA just joined Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and Apple in the trillion dollar market cap club by selling them the computing power they need to run their businesses. Like I said, lots and lots of chips. That's because as more and more of our lives move into the cloud, processing power is becoming increasingly important. With AI, the demand for compute is growing exponentially to a point the current cloud providers cannot support. And while many analysts are eager to write off crypto in favor of AI, in a crazy turn of events, it might be crypto that ends up saving the AI industry by letting users profit from the chips they have lying around. This week on Coinage, we're getting cloudy with a chance of crypto. What if I told you there was a crypto token that has increased on average 3,100% each year for the past decade? Well, then I'd be lying to you. But there is one metric that has followed that trend. The cost to train and run large-scale AI models like ChatGPT, Google Bard, Bing's chatbot, Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, and all the rest. Running ChatGPT reportedly costs OpenAI at least $700,000 every day. The number of computations required to train a state-of-the-art model doubles every few months. But that's not even the number one reason those costs are skyrocketing. Grego Suri, founder of Akash Network, says the main reason is that GPU chips needed to train those models are increasingly hard to come by. Ultimately, AI is only as good as the supply of GPUs it has, right? GPUs are the blood for AI. Whoever controls GPUs control the AI. One startup founder even compared the chip shortage to toilet paper during the pandemic. And while the heads of massive companies will simply pay more for computing power, smaller startups are at a significant disadvantage as the cost of running AI systems continues to rise. Three companies, AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud, account for two-thirds of the entire world's cloud computing market share. The top eight companies in the space account for 80% of the market. And that can be a huge problem for free market competition. If one of those companies wants to allocate more power for its own AI initiative, it can pretty easily do so. Meanwhile, the founders of smaller startups are literally begging salespeople at Microsoft and Amazon for more computing power. Please, sir. I want some more. What? So how can we disrupt the monopoly and ensure anyone has access to all the computing power they need? Cloud providers generally rely on data centers, or massive facilities which can house tens of thousands of servers, each with their own chips. Think of the data centers as hotels, facilities that were specifically built to serve a single purpose. So if data centers are hotels, what would an Airbnb for computing power even look like? Well, just like Airbnb lets its hosts make money from renting out their spare bedrooms, some crypto projects want users to rent out their spare chips for profit. Right, because Airbnb is a network that connects unused, um, you know, unused uh, space and offers a price point that uh, that's attractive. So Akash is that sort of layer uh, that is very similar to Airbnb for uh, developers that host cloud data. Greg's Akash network saw the same opportunity that many companies in the crypto cloud computing community did, from storage providers like Arweave and Filecoin to the GPU-focused render network. Instead of building their own data centers, like the trillionaire companies do, these Web3 startups are forging networks of users excited to rent out their own computing power in exchange for payment, in crypto tokens, of course. Osuri and other crypto cloud founders are hoping that their networks are not only more resilient and censorship resistant than the big cloud players, but cheaper too. So the current centralized infrastructure is crumbling and it cannot serve AI. And, um, and on, on you have that one hand. On the other hand, you have the the uh, Ethereum merge that basically unleashed nineteen billion dollars worth of uh, GPUs uh, that are not uh, that are idle right now. That last part is pretty key, and it isn't the first time we've seen an arms race for GPUs and other computing chips. Last time around, it was crypto miners who scooped up every chip on the market in order to mine Bitcoin and Ethereum sending secondary market prices for GPUs well above retail. 
That is, until Ethereum decided to switch to a proof-of-stake system, eliminating the need for those $19 billion worth of GPUs that Greg was talking about. Now, instead of running mathematical proofs in order to secure the blockchain, Akash, Render, and others want to harness those chips in order to compete against the cloud giants. And if you're excited by the idea of crypto companies saving AI, you're not the only one. Akash's token price is up more than 250% since the start of the year, and Render's token has more than quintupled in value over the same time frame. Of course, these companies have a long way to go in order to challenge the kings of the cloud. While Render is the biggest decentralized GPU network in the world with over 100,000 node operators, Render's market cap is currently hovering around $1 billion. Meanwhile, AWS did over $20 billion of revenue last quarter. But if you ask Jules Erbach, the founder behind Render's token, it's not a matter of if, but when a decentralized cloud solution takes over. Our idea is that at a certain point, scaling GPU rendering power is too difficult. It's impossible to leverage all of the GPUs in the world efficiently without some sort of decentralized system that allows that to be tracked and managed. That clip is six years old now. And in the backdrop of the current AI frenzy, Render Token is on its way back to where it was in the absolute boom cycle of 2021, something that can't be said about almost every other project in crypto in the bear market. But as much as crypto speculators want to talk about where Render Token might go from here, What if Render had the same market cap of NVIDIA? This is about more than speculation. This is about giving small players access to the same processing power as the big players. And that's pretty Web3. It speaks directly to the ethos of crypto, decentralizing power in order to create a more fair and just system. And while I can't definitively say where the value of these tokens will go, I can say that the system we have today is not fair. While small startups were begging Oracle for server space, Elon Musk walked in and bought it all up. Because look, Elon will always get his chips. But today's tech giants shouldn't get to write the rules of our future just because they're rich enough to buy all the hardware necessary to build it. I'm Zach Usman. This was Coinage. Remember to like and subscribe and let us know in the comments if you have any chips we could use. Stay safe out there.